this is all selling people like false hope it's selling them on like this it's like a fantasy that if you just if you're if you can just start your shopify store that you can you know make up to three thousand dollars a month right you'll be lucky if you can make three thousand dollars in the first year okay so somebody uh sent me this video uh last week the smartest path to ten thousand dollars a month in 2023 I have a feeling this is going to, uh, this is going to make me mauled. All right, let's check this out. All right, everyone, welcome to this YouTube video. If you are new here in the channel, welcome. My name is Sander Stage, and I'm a 21-year-old entrepreneur and millionaire. I'm a 21-year-old entrepreneur and millionaire. Show me the receipts, bitch. I know it sounds like I'm bragging when I say that, and for some people that would be considered bragging, but I think that is pretty relevant information for you to have since this is a video about how to make money. As I said, I'm currently 21 years old. I've been doing online business, running multiple online businesses. He's a dropshipping Andy. Every one of these dudes is a dropshipping Andy. I've been doing online businesses. You're dropshipping. For the past four or five years, today I'm making roughly $250,000 profit per month. And as I said, I'm at the mark where I can officially call myself a millionaire. So I guess that builds a little bit of rapport between you and I. And I guess I can say I have- Wait, wait. I'm making roughly $250,000 profit per month. And as I said, I'm at the mark where I can officially call myself- Making $250,000 profit per month. And he's at the mark where he can officially call himself a millionaire. So do you have a million dollars? in assets or liquid or are you just saying like yeah dude like by the end of 2023 i'll be a millionaire so i'm gonna just go ahead and call myself that self a millionaire so i guess that builds a little bit of rapport between you and i and i guess i can say i have somewhat of an idea of how you get to that 10k a month profit mark because i got there four years ago now before we get into this video i want to go ahead wait oh god it's, it's so fast to that 10k a month profit mark because i got there four years ago he's 21 and he got to the profit mark when he was 17. Now, before we get into this video, I want to go ahead and say this video is not going to be talking about one specific business model and the five steps you need to take to get to 10K per month with that specific business model. It's going to be talking about the different routes you can take and also the route that I recommend for you to take. Of course, depending on where you are in life and what kind of risks uh, you want to take and just who you are as a person. So with that said, let's get into the video. But again, before we do that, I want to say I want to send $250 to one of you guys on PayPal or the equivalent in Amazon or Apple products to your doorstep. And I want to send that to the person that leaves the best comment. Okay, so you can comment anything you want. You can comment how making 10K a month would change your life. You can comment what you want to be making in three to six months from now, or just what your goals are in general. Okay, we'll be reading through the comments, picking out the best one. And as I said, sending $250 on PayPal. Doug, you're making 250K profit per month and you're only offering someone 250 for the best comment? What? What's the top comment? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Sort by top comment. 250, 250k profit a month. That's that's amazing. Good job, Sanders. Thank you for sharing. I feel inspired. I hope to reach your level on uh, on day soon. God bless. Top comment is a bot. Top comment is NPC posting. <laughs> the fuck? Oh wow, look, it just so happens my best friend won this sweepstakes. <laughs> Yet the best friend of the YouTuber or the equivalent Apple or Amazon products to your doorstep. Now, with that said, let's get into today's video. I think it's important that we start off by breaking down the basics and okay. sort of look at our opportunities. Okay, okay, so if we go down to the very, very, the utmost basic level of this, what if you're a US citizen and you get employed on the floor in Walmart, right? Okay. How much can you expect to okay. make? Well, off the bat, a Walmart employee, the minimum salary for them will be between 14 to $15 per hour. Okay. okay? So you multiply 15 with the amount of hours that you work per day, and then you multiply that with the amount of days that you work per year, and you'll get an annual or yearly salary of roughly $24,000, $25,000 per year. Okay, now adjust that for the cost of living across America, where you can't, uh, you know, uh, rent a home, you can't rent an apartment on minimum wage, you can't just afford it on minimum wage, okay? Let's consider that you are fresh out of high school, okay? You're of working age, you're a, a, a voter uh, of voting age, right? You're 18. 
You're making fourteen to fifteen dollars an hour. You're making twenty-four and a half thousand a year. All right. Likely, you're still living with your parents, or if you're, you know, unlucky, uh, living with like a friend or something, or trying to find an apartment. You have no credit because how do you go into how do you get credit without uh, having debt accumulation? You know, they just have your parents buy you a house. Oh, okay. Okay. Now you divide that by the 12 months there are in a year and mm -hmm. you'll get around $2,000 per month, okay? So a full-time nine to five job in Walmart will pay you roughly $2,000 per month, okay? That's only 20% of the goal that we have in mind, which is 10K per month. And not only do we wanna make 10K per month, but we also wanna make that with freedom, right? So we can work when and where we want. So wait, 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 what? make 10k per month but we also want to make that with freedom right oh okay my freedom's earning me money <laughs> so we can work when and where we want so a baseline job at walmart will have you stuck in one position for the entirety of your day and you'll only be making two thousand dollars per month not very appealing to me but i'm very happy that there are some people that do it because we need those people in our society and we would be without them to speak bluntly okay yeah guys so we that's not listen you, well what we would be fucked if it wasn't for the proles, okay, the dirty pores stocking us the shelves at Walmart, which is, there's there's truth to that, right? But he's like, uh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. What can you do if you still want to be employed and you don't want to take the risk of being an entrepreneur and starting business? The well, risk of being an entrepreneur. I told you this thing's going to make me mauled. You can learn a higher paid job, right? You can learn a highly paid skill, something like learning to code, which to my knowledge, you can learn to do on a pretty decent level. In some Blunky, thank you for the gift, it's up. Something like six months. Okay. Of course, you, if you want to go really, really high level, it would take years, but you can learn to my knowledge to code pretty well in something like six months, something like six months. Of course, you, if you want to go really, really high level, it would take years, but you can learn to my knowledge to code pretty well in something like six months. And the sort of minimum or entry level salary for a coder in the US is around $90,000 per month. Minimum entry salary level salary a in the US is around $90,000. Entry-level salary for a coder in the U.S. is around $90,000 a month, is what he just said. Per month. Year. Oh, a year. Also, not true. <laughs> Both of those are not true. <laughs> Okay, so you divide 90,000 with the 12 months there in a year, and you're gonna get that you're from the get-go as a coder making $7,500 per month, okay? $90,000 annually. Yeah, so, 90K a year is probably double an entry-level coder uh, position. Now with a coding job, we're 75% of the way, right? We're 75% of the way towards that 10K a month goal, but we're still working oh, on Oh, sick, guys, yeah. So. What he's saying is, oh, you want to make $90,000 a year? Uh, take six months to learn how to, you know, code Java and C++, uh, you know, in your off time. Get an A-plus certification, and then you can, uh, you know, spend $500 on an A-plus certification course. And then you can uh, get an entry-level position as a coder, if you're lucky, I guess. You know, maybe you can work from home, and then you'll be able to make 90000 a year. Easy. All right, we're 75% of the way there. Check my last message. Just skim this article. It seems to uh, be uh, sucking on his dick, but uh, from skimming it, there's something that is no surprise at all. He's a private school student. Yeah, shocker. With this accent, yeah, I'm willing to bet he's a private school student. From skeptic to witness, I saw Sander Stage turn his uh, vision into reality. Okay. Nine to five, and we're still stuck working for a boss. That's Three month coding programs cost 10k. Yeah, well, what he's going to say is you can get an A plus certification <clears throat> for five hundred dollars, and you know study up on that, and then take the course. You'll get an A plus certification. That's an entry level coding position. Making more than us, right? We're we're essentially still stuck helping somebody else to create their business okay now if you don't want responsibility and risk in life and if you're fine with working for somebody else then something like learning to code and getting employed as a coder a plus isn't coding whatever will be pretty cool for you because there's also a lot of room to grow in that position sure you might start out by making nights ninety thousand dollars annually but i'm more than sure if you keep educating yourself and with experience you can grow in the position as a coder to make 150 or 200k plus per year as your annual salary.
So now you're making 200 Why isn't he offering any type of crime-related jobs you can uh, make easy buck, no high entry fee? Exactly. You want to make 10 grand a month? Sell crack. <laughs> a year as a coder, that's a little bit less than $20,000 per month. Okay, so now you're well above your 10K a month mark. But as I said, you're still working for somebody else. Now, if you're like me and you know you have a strong entrepreneur in your stomach and you want to work for yourself whenever and wherever you want, and you just want to spend your time constructing something that will pay you more and more over time because it's your business, then we have to look towards entrepreneurship. Okay. So listen, help. okay. This guy, he's, he's clearly a grifter. Okay. He's clearly a grifter. He's got the, whatever the fuck, uh, uh, sexuality lighting you want to call this in the background. I don't know what you would call green and blue. He's got a sure SMB microphone. Okay. So already, you know, we're, we're entering into, you know, charlatan territory. All right. But first and foremost, he's like, oh, you can get an entry level position at a, uh, a Walmart and then learn to code on the side while you're working full time at a Walmart. All right. Meanwhile, if you actually want to make money, all right, you want to be on your fucking grind set. You want to be out here hustling and grinding and stacking up that cash. All right. I'm talking pot. I'm talking smack. I'm talking like heroin. I'm talking all the good shit, crack, smack, blow, angel dust, booger sugar, okay? I'm talking all that good shit, all right? That's how you want to stack up the cash, all right? You get in with MS-13, you start getting some Fenties across the border. That's how you want to do it. You stuff some Fent inside of a car tire, you drive that right across a point of entry. That's how you make 10 grand a month. Nose clams. <laughs> Twitch partner material right here. <laughs> Now, in GTA, obviously I'm fucking joking, but like, yeah, like 10 grand a month, uh, you know, going from like pushing carts at a Walmart, studying how to code on the side and then making 90,000 a year is ridiculous. Also, someone said uh, something else. What was that? Someone has something very relevant to say. $90,000 uh, a year in Los Angeles is near poverty. As, all, uh, as always, all this shit depends on where you're at. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Pavlov. Because your spawn point is the number one predictor of like what your end of life income and like wealth is going to be. It's all dependent on your fucking spawn point, right? Because like the the median household income in Louisiana is like thirty eight thousand dollars, right? Median, and that's not a lot. That's not a lot. You'll be lucky if you can uh, rent a nice townhouse with that in the city, like or just right outside a college town. You'll be lucky. So, uh, like someone in the chat right now was looking at uh, homes in Louisiana for a student program. And this shit's expensive as fuck, even just for a student. Just trying to find a one bedroom apartment. It's crazy. You said cocaine six different ways. Do you know other drugs? No. <laughs> he didn't even mention that the average cost to get started with a coding education is ten to $15,000. Well, what he's going to say, Firefly Whisper, is not getting a legitimate education in, uh, in like coding, right? Not going to your community college and getting an associate's degree in coding or whatever the fuck, you know, computer sciences. He's going to say that you can watch YouTube videos online of how to like code javascript and shit and that's free and you can learn how to code from there and somebody will hire you without a certification with no degree because you got a strong handshake and you can show them how good you can code we've sort of briefly okay, is there going to be a part two on, on tax evasion sort of life as a as an employee as a person that's employed by a boss now as i said if you don't want any risk in life you just want to go the comfy route then that's for you okay but if you are like me yeah we just uh you just bought a house that while it's uh decent isn't anything special and it was four hundred thousand dollars yeah the house that i grew up in um with my family they bought for a hundred and thirty five thousand dollars in like 2006 that shit is over half a million now it is it's just a cookie cutter suburbanite home nothing special at all probably still got the hole in the drywall that i carved to hide my drugs in you're willing to take on that risk to gain the freedom that entrepreneurship gives you when it's going well then let's look at what your opportunities are okay now my first venture into the online business world was roughly five years ago back in 2017 when i was a 16 year old kid with a yeah, face of course with man, pimples buddy. and my first online business if you will was selling shout outs on instagram okay i did this through like a men's fashion back it up 
in 2017 when I was a 16 year old kid with a face full of pimples and my first online business if you will was selling shoutouts on Instagram okay I did this through like a men's fashion Instagram profile it didn't have a lot of followers 25 30,000 followers but granted I could still sell shoutouts on it it didn't have a lot of followers 25 to 30,000 followers and I was selling shoutouts what dude the delusion First of all, yeah, that's not a business. Technically, it is because if you're talking about like how you're going to file your taxes, like it will be filed as technically a business, but that's an insane, insane starting point that you had 25 to 30,000 followers at 16. What were you doing? What were you selling at 16? Okay. So at the peak of this, I could make like $100 per day selling two shoutouts per day on this profile. Okay, that was at the peak of it. If I had kept doing it, maybe I could have taken it to 5K per month. Okay, but at the peak of me doing it, I was making $100 per day or roughly $3,000 per month with this. Okay, as I said, on some days it was a little bit lower and if I wanted to, I could have scaled it maybe to 5K per month, but it wasn't really scalable past that level. Granted, you know- Okay, so in 2017 at 16 years old, he had 30,000 followers at, at the most, okay, at the highest, on Instagram and was selling shoutouts to a men's fashion uh, brand or men's fashion brand. So what he was basically doing is he was a micro-influencer that was doing brand uh, sponsorships with uh, fashion lines and like doing pop tags in, uh, in his posts, right? And those brands would uh, like pay him like 50 to $100 for every post. And he would post once a day with different fashion brands. Crazy that every single day he was getting sponsorships with those brands to, uh, you know, post up their products. Crazy that somehow at 16, he had accumulated enough social media clout that fashion brands were paying him $100 at most a day to post their brands. Weird. How did that happen? How did he, you know, get that sponsorship? How did he accumulate those followers? He's 16 years old after all. What exactly was he doing? What exactly was he selling? What was his like brand other than being, you know, a trust fund Andy? Yeah, dad's golf buddies. As a 16 year old kid, not really wanting to, not really feeling ready to talk to clients physically, still being very shy and moderate as a person, making $100 per day, just selling Instagram shout outs, working one or two hours per day on that was pretty cool. I feel right? like a small, he had a small loan of a million dollars. Yeah, well, as, as uh, Anglo pointed out, he is a uh, private school Andy. Because I'm making $3,000 per month with that, working one to two hours per day on it, as in comparison to the Walmart worker working from- One to two hours per day on a post? Nine to five, like eight hours plus per day makes less than me. Right? So it was pretty cool for a 16 year old kid to just be able to type some messages on Instagram with his iPhone and make $3,000 per month doing that, um, working once to Yeah, hours. that is pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. Per day. Much better than the, the Walmart position, if you ask me. However, I was not making anywhere close to what a full-time coder would make with an entry-level salary of $7,500 per month. Listen, guys, listen. It was pretty nice that as a 16 year old, I was able to post on Instagram with fashion sponsors making, you know, $3,000 a month. It was pretty cool, but it was nowhere near as lucrative as being an entry level coder making $90,000 a year. Again, a thing that doesn't happen, a thing that's not real shit he made up. You know, I came from kind of humble beginnings, just posting on Instagram. So I could definitely not call myself rich yet, but that was sort of my first venture into the online business world. And that was really what made me realize that it was indeed possible to craft or create your own. Yeah, crazy how like a, a hundred musicians, producers and artists on Instagram uh, from my producing days that tried to get uh, brand collabs and have had maybe like one ever. Yeah, like I have a decent amount of traction on this channel, right? For a small content creator and you know what the brand opportunities I have are? HelloFresh, Factor, Raid Shadow Legends. Now, Raid Shadow Legends literally, like, throws money at people, right? If you can get the, the, uh, the, the pay-fors, right? If you can get, like, 70 people to, you know, get through the tutorial, they'll throw, like, a grand at you. Men's fashion brands. What is it, like, you know, Giorgio Armani, you know, like, Gucci probably he was uh like maybe 
like uh, Ferragamo was like sponsoring him. I'm guessing because he's again a trust fund Andy, probably dad's friends with somebody who works at uh, at Gucci, giving him a little like hundred dollar a day sponsorship. You know, nice little nest egg from a buddy of his. Clash of Clan gives decent money even without signups. Are you allowed to sell men's lingerie on Twitch asking for a friend? Uh, I don't know. I know I've seen some people have Adam Eve uh, sponsors on their streams, but I don't know. Business online. I don't know what the rules around so it are. I would much rather have done that, making $3,000 per month from my iPhone, than I would have uh, liked to work a full-time job as a coder and making more than 2.5x that, right? I would much rather do that because it I would have the freedom and the scalability of it, okay? Granted, it was not very scalable, but it was still complete freedom, very few working hours, and yeah, just the opportunity to do it from wherever in the world. After a while of selling these Instagram shoutouts, I got tired of it mainly because it wasn't scalable. And so I started looking towards business models, online business models that were more scalable. And that's when I discovered Shopify dropship, right? Now, I'm definitely not doing Shopify dropshipping today, but uh, it was pretty fun and I learned a lot doing it. Primarily, I learned how to market products online, okay? I had saved up, you know, a few thousand dollars from, from selling these shoutouts and just other small things I'd done throughout my life. And so I had just a little bit of capital to invest into Shopify dropshipping. And I'll tell you, within the first month or two, doing drop... I called it in the first 10 seconds of this video. He's a dropshipping Andy. That's, that's the only thing these guys have. Every single one of them are doing dropshipping. Not a single one of them ever bring forward, like, you know, a wide array of things to do. Or even, even starting capital. They never bring up how they were able to get the capital to start those ventures. Because to do drop shipping, you need at least $10,000. If you want it to be a successful venture, you need 10 grand of starting capital for uh, one, getting your resources, building out your website. The building of the website's not that expensive, right? You maybe like, you know, if you really want to have a good one, maybe like $500 to like, Hire out an artist, a graphic designer to really make it look, you know, snappy and uh, get the actual like infrastructure of the website built up. Maybe like $500 max, right? You could do it with less. But then you need marketing, you need advertising money, you need uh, more artists to hire out uh, your, uh, to actually build your marketing uh, like strategy, you know, whether it's assets and all that. You need like 10 grand to actually build out a proper drop shipping uh like venture so that you have enough runway to continue it more than the first two quarters like what the fuck to be fair drop shipping was very profitable in 2016 to 2018 because of how cheap and uh, uncompetitive facebook ads were yeah i don't know what this facebook ad market looks like right now but like even back in like 2013 like i bought when i was trying to like you know grow my brand is like a cosplay influencer like i bought some ads and it was like 20 bucks for like you know a couple days of ads and it would get a lot of traction dropshipping i had burned through all that capital it got to a point where i could make you know between three to five hundred dollars nice. per day with my shop that's cute store so now we're talking nine thousand to fifteen thousand dollars per month but keep in mind this is revenue, unless you're a schmexy gremlo who models for himself yeah or you have hot people who are friends with you Profit, okay, so that means even though I might be making $300 a day or $9,000 per month with my Shopify dropshipping store, maybe only 30% of that was, you know, in reality profit. So on a good month, maybe I could do three to $4,000 in profit. And it was quite a lot of work. Again, this is all selling people like false hope. It's selling them on like this, it's like a fantasy that if you just, if you're, if you can just start your Shopify store, that you can you know, make up to $3,000 a month, right? You'll be lucky if you can make $3,000 in the first year of starting a Shopify. First year, if you don't have the capital to be able to do the branding, to do the advertising, to like, you know, even like collaborate with other brands, get actual like influencers with larger platforms than you have, to you know shill your shit you can find videos on uh like this on youtube uh going back over a decade yeah it's nothing new they're, they're just selling people on false hope the, the myth of meritocracy you know related to doing it all the back this this what he's doing right now 
is the real business. Getting click-through ads, because this is very advertiser-friendly, it's inoffensive, it's not like, you know, uh, scandalous, or it's, uh, you know, going to violate terms of service. This is going to fly under the radar of so much, right? Because the underlying premise of this is going to funnel people into the real algorithm. The Sigma male pipeline. The Manosphere. That's where this thing makes its money. Because this guy is going to go on other podcasts. This guy is going to actually make... Yeah, it's an indirect pyramid scheme. That's a great way of putting it, Enki. This is where his real money is. Selling, you know, supplements or drop shipping uh, merchandise. That's all, you know, that that's all supplementary. This is where his real money is made. Selling people on false hope. And, I think someone pointed out earlier, this guy's also a motivational speaker. Those speaking fees can go as anywhere as high as like 10 grand for a, you know, two-hour speaking engagement. As a 21-year-old millionaire. Most of the dropshippers make their money from courses uh, they sell, uh, though not the dropshipping. Mm -hmm. All of the influencers I thought were legit are now exposed as scammers and are in court. Kevin David, I don't know who that is, but yeah. Yes, Graham, selling supplements is indeed supplementary. Well, I mean, like the, you know, the, the merch, the, the products are supplementary. That's just like, you know, padding the, uh, the, the bottom line. I worked for a scumbag uh, dropshipping company as a kid. The only way to make money was scamming people with two-step free trials. Exactly. Logistics. Shipping out the orders. Issuing refunds. Keeping the website up to date. Keeping the stock, you know, um, how many items you had in stock. Like, making sure that your inventory wasn't sold out from the supplier. Communicating with the supplier. There was a lot of back that you had to keep track of. And so I got tired of that eventually as well because... Or you could know people who can build sites and skip the $25. Yeah, or that, which he does. For sure and i do not only was my profit margins really really low and i had to you know push money into this for it to work not only those two things but i also just genuinely did not enjoy the business model i was selling crappy china products to people all over the world with three week shipping durations it just left me feeling a little bit of shame when i looked myself in the mirror in the morning like i was genuinely not feeling good about this business model even though i could have scaled that to 50 or maybe even a hundred thousand plus dollars per month I would have felt pretty trash doing that because it was not. Okay, dude. Oh, okay. Now you're like the benevolent millionaire. Okay. Okay, dude. Yeah. I felt so ashamed making 10 grand a month. Fuck out of here. I was not creating any value in the world. And so that's when I thought, well, I've learned how to market products online pretty profitably by doing dropshipping. So how can I take this newly acquired skill set and actually use it to create some value? And that's when I got the idea of sort of taking that knowledge and applying it to other businesses who actually sold products that I liked. Okay. That's when I got the idea of starting a social media marketing agency, right? So essentially taking my marketing knowledge. You took his marketing knowledge and started selling that knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. You found where the real money is made. Selling people how to make money. The oldest scam in the book. You too can be a billionaire if you simply buy my DVDs. You took televangelism and you put it on TikTok. Shut the fuck up. When it comes to e-commerce and selling products online and helping businesses with good products. What the drip shippers say, a drop shippers say, uh, is to scale up to a point uh, where to hire a third party warehouse and you need to uh, pay for your items and inventory to be in a warehouse. So we may be talking about keeping his inventory in the warehouse stocked. Sell more of that product, right? So I ventured into the agency business model. Three weeks later, I have my first client paying $1,800 per month. For the past three or four weeks, I've been building a new business. Hey guys, so I just finished the meeting and um, I closed the client. So that is basically a $4,500 deal signed today. And within three to six months, I was making 10 to 25K per month. Now, keep in mind, when you make 10K a month with an agency, that's like $9,800 profit, maybe even more than that, because you have virtually zero operational expenses. Yeah, good luck finding an agency that's only going to take 2%. Good luck. With running an agency. Okay, sure, you might have to pay for your domain, hosting your website, etc and a couple softwares, but it's not gonna run you more than 20 or $30 per month as compared to dropshipping where you would need, I would say to go into dropshipping, I would not recommend doing that unless you have at least five to $10,000 cash. Yeah, like I said. To sort of burn in the process. Yeah, okay. 
How would you get the $10,000? Where do you get that? Where do you get that? Where do you get the connections for the agency? Where do you get the starting capital? Where do you like where do you get the capital to show that the investment from the agency is going to be like profitable on their end of attempting to make it work? Okay? With the agency business model, you needed zero startup capital because there's no expenses. All you had to do was find clients, make contact with those clients, oh, okay. have a meeting, offer your service, and then close them as a client. And oh, okay. Start yes, it's it's easy as that, guys. Find clients, make a business deal, profit. Delivering that service for them. The ad budget, of course, comes from the pocket of the client. So all you have to do is manage their ads. So okay. just lie. I mean, that would be good advice. That would be good advice. Like, hey, here, if you want to be a good, like, you know, drop shipping Andy, and you want to scale up and like, you know, partner with an agency that's able to handle the, uh, you know, the logistics of your drop shipping venture, lie to them. That would be actually good advice because it would be accurate. Now, baseline, or I would say entry level client, when you're first starting up your agency, will pay you around $2,000 per month. Okay. Now, it's going to take you roughly two to three hours of work per week to serve that. That's client. what Trump did. It's what Elon Musk has done his entire career, and he's one of the richest people on the planet. That's literally what Elon Musk has done his entire career. Aside from being a, you know, apartheid and world mind beneficiary. Okay, so two to three hours per week times four. Let's round up to 10 hours per month. Okay, that was a loud car. It must have been a Ferrari or something like that. Maybe a Maserati. Sound like a Maserati. Regardless, you're now working 10 hours. Yeah, I can tell what cars are driving by my, you know, walk up loft apartment by the sound. All right, dude. Per month for a client that's paying you $2,000 per month. Right? So you divide 2000 with 10, obviously that's $200 per hour if you really, really want sort of an estimated figure of how much you're making per hour. But in my opinion, with this business model, with the agency business model, you're not exactly trading your time for money because the work that you do for your clients, you can do from anywhere in the world at any time of the day, whether that be seven in the morning, four in the morning, or three in the afternoon, it doesn't matter. Sure, you will have to have a meeting with your clients every two to four weeks with bigger clients, maybe once a week, and so you have to sort of align your time zones with them just for the meeting. But when it comes to the actual work that you're doing for the client, it doesn't matter where or when you do the it. The word work is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Okay. And so in reality, to get to 10K per month profit with an agency, refresh, refresh, really isn't that difficult. All you need to do is sign five clients that pay you 2K a month each. Okay. Now, obviously that is easier said than done, but I guarantee you that signing five clients at 2K per month each, okay. so 10K profit, with an agency is way, way, way easier than it would be to make a 10K profit per month doing something like dropshipping, okay, on undead logic, Instagram, or affiliate marketing. All of those things require much more management and require you to work many more hours in front of your computer. The beauty of the agency business model is that you can sign five clients paying 2K per month each. The amount of workload you have is very minimal and your profit margins are around 98% to begin with. It's the Definitely look at that Medium article after. Afterwards, you'll have to decipher through the bullshit. But once you're done, you'll know uh, more about this guy. Okay, I need to do that. I need to go back to this Medium article. I met uh, Sanders stage for the first time. It was on uh, our first day of high school at a prestigious international school in Milan. Wow, that sentence costs $100,000. <laughs> Uh, new students had been brought outside of the city to engage in team building activities such as canoeing and eating together. <laughs> I was a nervous teenager who didn't know anyone, let alone exchange a word with anyone. Sander and I uh, were introduced to each other upon being paired together for a treasure hunt and embarked on a hunt for poorly assembled clues. At this stage, we were simply going with the flow and didn't really do much together uh, other than follow the hunt and occasionally crack a joke ab uh, about the childish task we were carrying out. First day of high school at a prestigious international school in Milan. Your assignment? Go fuck around in the city for a scavenger hunt. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Sick. 
With him being the person I had gotten the most acquainted with, uh, we sat together on the bus ride home and started talking. I excitedly pl uh, explained to him with the Supreme Clothing reselling scheme I had just learned about. You are 14. You're 14. I guess these are the conversations that, you know, the children of, like, you know, oil barons have when they go to their prestigious international schools in Milan. You know, maybe that's why his accent is so scuffed, which involved buying clothes upon their release and reselling them for a profit shortly afterwards. Right, right. So you were sharking. Like high-end clothes. It turned out Sander was already aware of this and had already been doing it two years prior. So he was selling, reselling Supreme shirts at 12? The timeline is so fucked up. Like, he said he was a millionaire at 17. Or making ten thousand dollars a day at seventeen, and now he's his friend who wrote this puff piece for him said that he was reselling like high end fashion apparel at twelve. Yeah, all real. How does a child afford that exactly? Like, okay, so we're just talking about what trust fund Andy's do. This was confirmed when he showed me a small online business. That he had set up. He would sell shout outs on Instagram. Okay. Price of 15 to 25 dollars. And make approximately 25 to 50 dollars. A day doing this. At the time for me. It seemed like something straight out of Wall Street. Yeah. Wall Street does that. As I would see no more than 25 dollars in allowance per week. We began walking home together after school. And hanging out in the uh, classes that we had in common. We clicked quite qu uh, quickly. Found each other to be the same wavelength in many aspects. Yeah, dude, we were both fucking grinders, you know? Which was something that I couldn't quite uh, say about the rest of our classmates. The school's social dynamic involved frequent flaunting of wealth, <laughs> snobbery, and overall atmosphere was pompous. Yeah, not like you two guys who were talking about your fashion reselling brands and your, you know, get-rich-quick schemes that you were doing. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't say... I, too, am on my fucking grind, fellow Sigma. Neither of us came uh, out of overly wealthy families, and we both had our ba uh, unique backgrounds, uh, which were quite far from the other kids. This led us to often stick together, and throughout this time, we became increasingly tight. Okay, I need to know who their parents are. Because if they're saying they were going to a prestigious international high school in Milan, and they're saying they didn't come from overly wealthy backgrounds who are their parents and who are the other kids parents yeah overly doing a lot of heavy lifting there poorest kids at the rich school <laughs> yeah private school in milan but weren't wealthy my parents couldn't afford a private uh private bougie school in milan yeah the math ain't mathing out not only did sander not fit uh the social mold of an uppity private school student he carried too much, uh, too much more important, unique aspects. He wanted to shape his own career from the ground up instead of following an established path riddled with orders and commands. Okay, dude. Okay. Okay. Oh my god, uh, let's see. Dude, I need to know, okay, what's his name? I need to know his family. I need to know who his family is. The Sander Stage Podcast. Of course he's on, t oh god, oh god, I gotta, I gotta see his podcast. How would Sander Stage start an SMMA? Self-education, let's see. So, the first thing that millionaires do, maybe differently from you, is a lot of self-education. When it comes to self-education, it's not just business YouTube videos, okay? It's reading books, obviously, listening to audiobooks, listening to podcasts, and even other learning stuff like learning languages. Or... Okay. Guys, guys, when it comes to self-education, it's not just watching YouTube videos. It's reading and audiobooks and podcasts and learning other stuff or studying master classes <laughs> which by the way if you uh click the link in uh the my bio i have a link to my master class jesus wait what is this 
Biologically, throughout history, we can quite clearly say that in the first five to 10 years of a child's life, experiencing love from the mother's side is more beneficial and experiencing discipline and lectures from the dad's side in the next uh, 10 years from the- Of course, of course. What the fuck did I say? What did I say, dude? This is the pipeline. This is the fucking pipeline. The Sigma grind set, small business, entrepreneur, the manosphere, like nuclear family, uh, you know, homophobic pipeline. It's all here. It's all laid out. Everything the light touches is yours to fucking scam. So from 10 to 20 is more beneficial. It's more natural for the mom to bring up the children and the, and the dad to be a little bit distanced from the children during their early years and working and making money. That's just, that's just how humans are. Mm, ah, yes, the appeals to nature. Medium article says he's from Denmark. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, this dude's a piece of shit. Business model that allowed me to first get to 10K profit per month, and it's the biggest part of the reason that I can call myself a millionaire today. So to round everything off, once again, if you want the security, security of employment, keep in mind, you can always be fired from a job. But if you don't want to take a risk of starting a business and you just want to feel safe in a working position where you're working for a boss that tells you what to do, well, Walmart, not very appealing. You're making 2K per month, but learning a valuable skill like coding could be appealing to you because you can make, as I said, from the get $7,500 per month, but it's a position with room to grow and you can probably get to 200 plus thousand dollars in annual salary doing coding if you get really good at it. But, you know, running an agency, getting to 10K per month is something you can do with, I would say, as little as a month of studying and one or two He's months. He's so detached from the average Joe. It's hilarious. Yeah, crazy that the, you know, prestigious international school in Milan, Andy, is detached from, you know, normal working class experience. Yeah, shocked to find out. Shocked to find out. Okay, I need a palate cleanser. I need a palate cleanser, chat.